A prime minister designate and new members of his party get ready to take office in Israel, and hundreds gather in Turkey to pay respects to the late Grand Unity Party leader as he is laid to rest. We have those stories for you and much more after these headlines. Well, so far so good. There have been no reports of water seeping through dikes along the Red River in North Dakota as fears of flooding were raised by a heavy snowstorm. Now residents working day and night and keeping their eyes out on rising waters. Plus, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is calling on the international community to work together and provide more security and development aid to Afghanistan. Clinton is also urging not to let the economic recession get the best of us. Plus, search and rescue crews are still searching waters off the coast of Libya or after an overcrowded boat packed with more than 250 migrants capsized. Investigators are saying the boat was carrying five times as many people than its capacity. And Israel's prime minister designate is preparing to take office after a hard-fought election. Benjamin Netanyahu will be sworn in during a special session along with new members of his party. And something new and very human-like is coming out of Japan. Japanese scientists have unveiled a new robot program to mimic actions of any human being. To show you what the new bot can do. Well, officials and residents in North Dakota are crossing their fingers that the weather does not damage the dikes and levees holding back the swollen Red River. I'm not too worried because it seems like the, the water is going down pretty quick. And I just think that Fargo has such a good hold on everything. Speaking at a conference in The Hague, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is urging the international community to provide more security and development aid to Afghanistan. The Hague meeting aims to re-energize international efforts to help Afghanistan as violence there has reached its highest level in years. U.S. President uh, Barack Obama left for Europe today to face critical economic and political talks in his first journey across the Atlantic since taking office. Obama's main focus is on the G20 meeting of the world's major economic powers and a NATO summit as his popularity in Europe is not translating into European support for the massive spending that he wants. The president is also hoping NATO countries will send more troops to Afghanistan. This weekend, there's a NATO summit in France and Germany before the trip wraps up next week with stops in the Czech Republic and Turkey. Meantime, a Washington Post survey found that the number of Americans believing the nation is headed in the right direction has about tripled since Obama was elected in November. Well, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden said that his government was aware it needed to provide greater assistance to Central America's battle against drug trafficking and violence. Biden spoke following a meeting with regional leaders in Costa Rica. We know that there is a need for assistance beyond Mexico. It, it well, General Motors Corporation's new chief executive says more of the automakers' plants could close as part of General Motors' efforts to meet new tougher requirements for government aid. In his first press conference as chief executive officer, Fritz Henderson said that he expects the company would, quote, need to take further measures, unquote, in terms of plant closures. Well, the British military transferred over command of the oil-rich southern province of Basra to the United States today, the latest step toward fully withdrawing the remaining 4,000 British troops from Iraq by the end of May. Six years for the British Army here in Iraq. Benjamin Netanyahu's government prepared to take power after a hard-fought election and weeks of coalition negotiations and political maneuvering. Israel's parliament is set to hold a special session to swear in Netanyahu as prime minister along with his cabinet, religious party and labor party. The session will also honor the new position Netanyahu created for his partners and allies. Recently, Netanyahu has been busy remodeling his own image. At his election campaign, he criticized the outgoing government's peace talks with the Palestinians, but he has since softened his stance on his matter, bringing in the Labor Party into his coalition and saying...
he would pursue peace with the country's Arab neighbors. Well, at least 200 people are feared dead after an overcrowded boat filled with migrants capsized in stormy seas off the coast of Libya. After four days, 20 people have been confirmed dead. The boat only had the capacity to carry 50 people. However, there were 250 people on board heading to Italy. More than 20 people were rescued from the overturned boat. A second boat with about 350 migrants on board was rescued safely in the same area. Both boats were carrying migrants from Africa and the Middle East. Thanks for watching Ever News. We'll see you tomorrow.